Billy Packer. Well, the Big East and the Southeastern Conference get together on this Sunday afternoon. You know, both these fine teams have got one eye down the road on the upcoming NCAA tournament. This is a big test. But Kentucky will be without its star, Rex Chapman. I asked Rex what happened the other night when he injured his back against LSU. I didn't know if I wanted to try and go in straight and maybe try to dunk it or just to, to lay it in. And uh, I was a little too far out to try to dunk it, so I just thought I'd lay it up there. And when I did, I kind of got my my uh, butt and, and legs caught on his shoulders and then flipped back and uh, tried to, I was hoping my legs would get down there, but they never did, and I just landed right on my back. Yeah, I knocked my breath out of me, and that, I think that scared me pretty much. Uh, I couldn't get my breath. Let me update that for you. It's not as serious as was first reported. In fact, Rex warmed up today, not expected to play. What will they do without? Well, Brent, it's very difficult to change anything offensively or defensively when you lose a star of this magnitude. It puts an awful lot of pressure on Eddie Davender, particularly if this game goes down the wire, to both handle the ball and take the big shot. Now, what about Jim Beheim and his crew, including center Ronnie Cycling? Well, one of the things Jimmy Beheim was probably looking forward to trying some of his junk defenses against a club featuring a Rex Chapman. He won't have to do that now. But Ronnie Cycling has always played great games against teams with big reputations who had big people. I don't know if he'll have another monster game today. We'll have to wait and see. Billy, Coach Eddie Sutton of Kentucky was asked, how do you feel about being an underdog at home? He said, I'd rather have Rex Chapman and be a favorite. Coming up, Kentucky and Syracuse. CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's game between the Syracuse Orange Men and the Kentucky Wildcats is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Haviland Supreme Motor Oil. The motor oil that's cool under fire. of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. Who would you say makes the best personal computers for business? The brand being added by the most major corporations? The one rated highest in performance by computer experts? The one that won the most industry awards? Or the one that's grown the fastest. Hard call, right? Not really. In each case, the answer is compact. It simply works better. at the Rupp Arena. Syracuse comes in here with a starting lineup that averages in the double figures for Coach Jim Beheim. Up front, he's extremely talented. Coleman at 6'9", averages better than 14 points. Thompson plays taller than 6'4". Cycli goes at 6'11", and he averages almost 16 a game. Then in the backcourt, and Douglas is their leading scorer at better than 16 a game, and Rowe, he's the three-point shooter. On the other side, Eddie Sutton, who now has won 400 games at Creighton, Arkansas in here. Bennett and Ellis stepped into that starting lineup today with Chapman out. Locke is his center. And in the backcourt, well, the team leader is Eddie Davender. He averages 16 a game. He's 6'2". And Manuel, the freshman, 
moves to that other guard spot. But they tell me, Barry, that Manuel is more comfortable at guard than he is at forward. You know, he's a very versatile player for a freshman. Really can play three spots on the floor. So uh, it really didn't hurt Eddie Sutton that much in that respect. But, of course, you can't make up for a shot in one day. Syracuse fans are gasping. They don't recognize these uniforms. For the first time since the mid-70s, they break out the blue. Now, Coach Beheim ordered them for last year. They didn't arrive in time, and so today they're wearing them for the first time since 1975. Should they lose, you'll see them again in another 10 years. <laughs> well, straight man to man coming up by Kentucky. Syracuse very seldom sees man to man. Holman getting in on Ellis, and Ellis came over. And a foul is called on Winston Bennett. Early in the year, Brent, it almost got to be that Syracuse hated to go out on the floor in games, Maryland, expecting Maryland, to see the, the packed-in zone. But you can see the respect that Matt Rowe has oh, created Maryland, for the opponents, and now people are playing them straight up man to man. But let me let me correct that. It was Ellis moving in from the side who made the contact and was assessed the person. Syracuse has attempted 132 more free throws than Kentucky. They have made 18 less. On the Achilles heel of this team for the last several years. They start off hitting 50% at the line. This is Davender out of Brooklyn, running the Wildcat attack. Then at 25, rebounding from knee surgery. He missed all of last year. Ellis, the freshman from California. Manuel sends it back to Davender, and Bennett, who has been practicing that jump shot of his relentlessly this season, looking for a little daylight. It'll be Davender. A two-point field goal for Eddie Davender. Puts the Wildcats ahead. Rick is looking for his first point for the Wildcats. And here's why you don't play them man-to-man -man often. Ronnie Sykley with Rob Locke all by himself down inside. If Locke's going to allow him to post up that close to the basket, he's in trouble. quote from Sykley before the game began. If they show me man, it's lights out. <laughs> That's a strong statement, but you certainly can't let him handle it that low. Stenick. Thompson jumped out and fouled him. His first. Let's take a look at the Southeastern Conference standings and Eddie Sutton with an eye on that chase and some big games coming up against Georgia amongst them. That's why he kept Chapman out. Now, as far as the Big East is concerned, be with us next Sunday. We'll be at the Carrier Dome. There'll be a huge throng there. Pittsburgh and Syracuse expected to decide the regular season championship before the conference heads for Madison Square Garden in its annual tournament. In uniform, he practiced a little bit yesterday. Rex Chapman, he broke a small bone, small of his back. That sounds more serious than it is, however, and he will have to play through some pain when the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament gets underway. But the doctors say there is no danger that he will suffer any more injury. Full court zone pressure, nice shot by Kentucky. Bennett, missing. Coleman strength, rebounding, outlet to Douglas. It's three on two. Back into the hands of the point man, and here's Cycli's second field goal. Good ball movement there underneath by the Orangemen. Fred, this press could be effective because of the size that Kentucky has. It's very difficult to throw over the top of that front line of the press. But you can see what Douglas can do in the open court area. One of the best in the whole country. Opening moves of Kentucky and Syracuse. Ellis. Locke crashes to the glass. Over to Syracuse. Coleman had the inside position, rebounding. Syracuse showed a little junk defense that time down the court with a little Boston one on Eddie Davender. I guess if Jimmy's going to practice it, he wants to use it. Uh, Cycli with three baskets, basically layups, and they'll have to adjust their defense now. Yeah, soon. problems there because Ronnie Cycli just did easy inside position. Now let's check this defense out again. And now they're playing a triangle in two. Emmanuel. And Locke with an offensive rebound and a putback field goal. Stevie Thompson all alone. And Bennett quickly gets a hand on the ball and deflects it out of bounds. Saved the layup with that move. Bennett's good hustle, realizing he's got to get back. That's going to be an interesting matchup because Bennett should have an advantage over Thompson if he can power him inside even though Stevie Thompson has great leaping ability. Manuel taking Rowe off a fake, comes inside the question, and Lock 
yanks away a defensive rebound. Now it's Davinder on the move, looking for Daylight. Oh, what a great, great play by Eddie Davinder. Now, we thought that Eddie Sutton would try to pace this game a little bit. And that was just a super push-up court by Eddie Davinger. He lost the ball on his hip, but you're looking at a guy that scored right in between Rowe and Cycli. Cycli, an excellent shot blocker, just can't get to it. The personal foul has assessed Rowe, his first. The officials for this game from the Big East, Cody Sylvester, the referee. But one of the things, though, that could happen to Kentucky is to get into this up-and-down-the-court type action, which is really not for their benefit with Chapman out of this game. Here comes the 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. Lock back for safety. Thompson into the hands of Douglas, and here's Cycli drawing the foul. Step. Sutton complaining that he traveled over on the Kentucky bench. Ronnie Cycli needed to get a little wider base that time down inside. His feet were not quite adjusted, and even though the people went over his back, he didn't, wasn't able to score. He's loving it. Look at the smile on his face. He loves to see this man to man. Getting the inbounds from Coleman. Now Coleman getting in behind, and Ellis deflected the ball away. And into the hands of Davinder, who loses the dribble. Thompson's got it for the orange man. This is Douglas. His pace is Syracuse's pace. Offensive foul is called as Douglas dealt it over to Coleman a little bit late. And that's his first. One of those fifth-year seniors, Winston Bennett, instead of trying to make the spectacular block on Douglas, that good foot position to draw the charge. Here, Syracuse goes to the two-three zone, so they've showed a lot of different looks so far early in this ball game. Here's Ellis, his second shot. Kentucky up by three. The last year Kentucky lived with a three-point shot. This year they're not shooting anywhere near as many. Much better inside attack. A hustling, Leron Ellis knocking the ball out of bounds. The freshman drawing some marvelous desire here in the early moments. And some substitutions with Duncan checking in and Brower. There's Derek Brower, 6'9". And Rowe sits alongside Thompson on the Syracuse bench. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. I thought Kentucky might overplay a little bit and try to go for the steal. He traveled. Great defense by Eddie Davinder. Douglas is extremely quick. Davinder didn't go for that ball fake. A timeout is being called here by TV, and we'll be right back. drive really like to drive this is what your next car should be this is the all-new Pontiac Grand Prix Get on the Pontiac and ride. Pontiac ride. this is the 1988 motor trend car of the year and that ought to be you driving Get Heats on with motor oil viscosity can break down. To help keep your engine cool, trust Haviland Supreme. The motor oil is cool under fire. Haviland's viscosity booster helps protect engines against wear under extreme heat and stress. Haviland Supreme, cool under fire. wanted a Bud Light! Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Now go get pizza. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. When you're as talented as Derek Coleman, even though you're a sophomore, there are always rumors about the possibility of turning pro. Derek and I talked about it yesterday. It's a um, major goal for me just to get a degree 
And I really, you know, promised my mother I would stay in school and would not go or leave early. So that's really my priority right now. So for the time being, put those rumors to rest. And there's a young man by the name of Billy Owens coming to Syracuse next year. Derek certainly wants to spend at least one season teamed up with him. Billy Owens' reputation ranks him up with the very best who come out of high school basketball in the last few years. And, of course, there's something else to prove. Last year they were a runner-up to Indiana, and this year they'd like to go all the way. First things first, they trail Kentucky by three here in the Rupp Arena. Bennett with a nice drive off the dribble. Ellis with an offensive rebound. Foul is called, and it goes against Locke. His first. Trent, that last drive by Bennett. Now, if you're going to scout Syracuse, and you're going to see them in a man-to-man, -man, whoever Coleman is guarding, and this is one deficiency he really has in his game, he really can handle a man defensively that's playing out the fifth on the wing spot. And as you saw, Bennett went right by him. Avenger hounding Douglas all over him. In deep to Derek Coleman. Missing. Ellis keeps it in play. Cavender comes out on the move. And now he elects to bring it back up and set up the half-court game. Rock and Ellis doing a good job keeping that ball alive on the board. Bennett, jump shot, he practices over and over again. He is a better jump shooter now, Billy, than he was prior to that knee injury, they tell me. Yeah, I think that that year off helped him a little bit, but he was slow coming back this year and, and really is just now starting to show the signs of being the player that we thought he would be. Duncan giving it to Cycli, and that has been the Syracuse offense. Cycli on the inside for four field goals. It's Kentucky 12, Syracuse 9. Just under 15 minutes to go in the first half, along with Billy Packer and James Brown. I'm Brent Westbrook. Here comes Coleman again. He's over here with Bennett. See if they'll spring the ball, give Bennett a shot at it again. Here he is. Bennett off a fake coming up on Coleman. Power and Douglas's hands, and the quarterback quickly brings it down. Four on two, a manpower advantage. Duncan was hounded from the side by Bennett, but Coleman with an offensive rebound and the field goal. Again, I'm really surprised that Kentucky has pushed this ball up the floor so quickly and hadn't spent a little bit more time trying to slow the pace down. Ellis coming out off the screen. Cycling with Locke. Here's Ellis. Rattled out. Oh, great Coleman man. again. He can do this, put the ball on the floor. Brower, another block by Ellis, but into Douglas's hands. Did a great jump stop by Douglas when he went in among the trees there. Had good balance in order to get the pass back outside. Brower's gonna have a hard time getting his junk off inside with Ellis and Locke in there. Cycling, moving to the glass again. Eddie Sutton's got to be thinking zone. He just can't handle the big guy. He's perfect inside. Yep. Five for five against them. Syracuse leading 13 to 12. It's been the Ronnie Cycler show here so far in the first half. As far as Syracuse is concerned, Ellis fouled by Brower as he turned the corner. Uh, Brower, of course, is caught also in a tough situation in the fact that Ellis can put the ball on the floor extremely quick can play the wing position, so the, the matchups defensively for Syracuse are tough with Coleman and Brower having a hard time with Bennett and Ellis. Bennett leaving as Cedric Jenkins, 55, the 6'9", senior from Dawson, Georgia, checking in. Sutton with a few words for Bennett as he sits down. Richard Madison going to be coming in for Ellis, so Locke is going to be the only guy in that front line still hanging around. Now, they may try to put Jenkins on Cycling. Jenkins, an excellent defender, has had some big games defensively. Give Locke a little break. Well, Leroy Ellis is daddy. Leroy Ellis played, I think, about 14 years in the NBA. There he is in the uniform of the Portland Trailblazers. Got to take his son back out the backyard and work a little bit on those free throws. He's an outstanding player for Joe Lapchick at St. John's. Well, they're one of those great clubs with Kevin Lockerty, Willie Hall, Ivan Kovac, Tony Jackson. Richard Madison for his first action with Brower now leaving 
for Syracuse. Thompson returning. So on the floor for Syracuse now as they come up, it's Coleman and Douglas, Duncan, Sykley, and Thompson against Madison, Locke, Manuel, Jenkins, and Davenport is rubbed off. Here's Sykley again. And Madison rebounding off the miss. Sykley's first miss of the afternoon. You notice Locke is not getting any help either. Double teaming on Sykley. He's got him all by himself. Now Manuel from the baseline. Very talented freshman. Thompson. Getting in low with that left-handed shot. Cycle has it knocked away and out of bounds by Davin. Oh, sure it's for Good hands by Eddie Davender because Cycle was really poised to go up and hit another easy shot. Now Lowe coming in. This is really a game of matchups. It's like an NBA game. Who's going to have a team on the floor that matches up better with their opponent? Out of bounds by Manuel. And with the exception of the Cycle matchup, Kentucky matches up beautifully with uh, what's on the floor right now for Syracuse. Douglas on the pull up over Davender that time. You notice a little clear out there, Brent, which gave Davender no help whatsoever, figuring there was a screen on that side and he was a little hesitant to play up tight on uh, Douglas. Here's Douglas. The transition game for Syracuse. Now Derek Coleman again got beat by Jenkins, but he's such a great rebounder in a two-on-one. Davender back for the Wildcats and Sykley off with the miss. The side, they wanted Rowe and Madison hustled back. So we've got a timeout with 11.29 to go in the first half. We've had six lead changes right now. Syracuse up by three. Hey, sounded good. Save a few bucks, get the same quality. Then the gripe starts with data processing. I got garbage all over the orders. Pittsburgh now takes all night to download delivery schedules. AT&T gives you the fastest, most error-free data transmission. I'm paying 32 truckers to drink coffee. This is a good deal. AT&T's Worldwide Intelligent Network. Because we know it's not just long distance. It's your business on the line. AT&T, the right choice. Do you know who the best playing the game is? Me, Marge Blackman. And I'm way above the rim, demonstrating some serious hang time. Very serious. Do you know how I get up for my game? Do you know, do you know, do you know? That's right. Air Jordan, Air Jordan, Air Jordan. Mike, what's up? Oh, m money, money. Why you want to do that to me? Why you leave me hanging? Come on. I got it. Oh, Mike. Mike, man. That's cold, man. Notice my hair? Mm hmm Neat, natural looking, totally under control. That's consort hairspray. No wonder I attract crowds. <laughs> Some people will do anything to look this good. <laughs> consort, the hairspray that puts the American male in control. <laughs> With the designed-in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car. Delco Electronics is who we are. It is played on a course known as one of America's greatest tests of golf. The Los Angeles Open presented by Nissan, continuing next on CBS Sports. Three key players right here. You're going to see Jenkins put the ball on and drive into the hole. Manuel, who's playing one guard position, and Davin, who's playing the other. Instead of coming into the basket, they're going to have to swing back defensively, as you're going to see right here. When they do not, there's no floor balance whatsoever for Kentucky. And watch how easy it is for Syracuse to merely go long. Rebound comes out. Nobody back for floor balance. There are the two guards from Kentucky, 15 feet behind the easy layup for Sherman Douglas. Only three players have scored for Syracuse so far, whereas all five of the Kentucky starters have broken into the scoring column. And Cycli has been the big man. That's his second miss. Foul inside on Derek Coleman. 
Uh, Brent, one of the things that when you play against Syracuse and you scout them, you really worry about the lob pass. You can see Locke is playing right behind Cycli because Eddie Sutton doesn't want to give up the lob. But he's going to have to start siding him or fronting him a little bit because Cycli's just getting the ball in such easy working position. Full court pressure by Syracuse. Back to a straight man to man. Smart move by Coleman to lay off Jenkins. Ship it inside to Madison. He got Cycli in the air and then came back for two. The Orangemen's last two field goals. There's a way by Locke, and Gary comes off the dribble. And Brent Rob Locke did exactly what he has not been doing, and that is he got up on the side of Ronnie Cycli and did a great job defensively. The lead change off that field goal. And Coleman misses. Madison into Davender's hands in a foot race. He drew the foul. He'll shoot a pair of free throws. Rob Locke has been playing behind Ronnie Cycli. That's the first time today he stepped up in front of him. Of course, he ended up with a perfect play for a center, a guy that not only knocks the ball away, but picks it up and makes the uncontested layup. But excellent defense in his part. That's the second foul called on Sherman Douglas. He can't believe that it was assessed to him, and it was a non-shooting foul. So it came earlier in that sequence. Sherman's still upset with the official there. Yeah, he's he got to sure get is. back into I the game. I think he's got a reason to be there. Got to get back in the game. They're playing the two-three zone. Lock puts it down and cycling rejects it. It. Great. Off a nice pass from Douglas. There's Douglas showing his versatility as a passer. Instead of just throwing that lob, he just gutted that ball over. He's still looking at the official, Brent. Manuel off the pass. Short. Short going up, but there was a push inside. The second foul on Lock. That's the fifth team foul on Kentucky already six against Syracuse so they're in the penalty Brent Locke had a lot taken out of him in terms of energy when he made that play all the way down the court and he's very tired right now Eddie Sutton's gonna have to give him a, probably a couple of minute rest here's Rowe taking his first three Jenkins rebounded open Madison didn't let him touch it. Davender. Battle out. Coleman. That's five rebounds for Derrick. Lob. Off cycle. Out of bounds. Now there's some good coaching by Eddie Sutton. He just constantly worked on that lob pass and so far today Syracuse has not been able to get what is one of their major weapons. You can see Sherman Douglas looking to throw that lob to Ronnie Cycli, a great job by Jenkins getting right back there with him. Really no opening at all. Ellis has returned now for the Wildcats. He's out there with Manuel and Jenkins, Davender and Madison. Jenkins ought to put that ball on the floor. He got by Coleman one time. He ought to try it again. Jenkins is left alone. Gets the roll. I, I think that's really the weak link right now. Jenkins to take some advantage of Coleman. Douglas has it knocked away by Davender and then comes back with a great defensive play of his own. And as he came inside, the foul was called. Grant Sherman Douglas made about three great plays right there. One, the steal. The second was the decision he made to take. Now watch it. First he makes the great steal. Now watch the decision he makes. It looked like there was a pass there, but he, he realized it wasn't. Then he just went on through, and although the foul was committed, he would have had the third great play with a good dish inside. Quite a player. And Ellis is in foul trouble here early. That's three on the freshman with 8-10 to go in the first half. And that puts 
Sutton's bench now under the spotlight. Do you want anything? How about a light? Could you make that a Bud Light? If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Did you see? No. <laughs> Did you? No. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. To create new worlds, you need to see in new ways. Be curious. Look at the problem from another direction. Commit yourself to the long term. Keep your mind open. Look for breakthrough ideas. From aerospace to healthcare, we're creating new worlds by seeing in new ways. BASF, the spirit of innovation. You could ask. A four by four that'll shift the balance of power in the truck world. Toyota's all new V6 4x4, the most advanced V6 engine in any compact truck. Unsurpassed horsepower, more low down torque than any compact V6 4x4. New V6, now who's looking out for number one? Toyota. American Lori McNeil, the world's number one player, Steffi Graf, and many others compete in the U.S. Women's Hard Court Championships next Saturday on CBS Sports. Well, you mentioned the name Owens, and everyone up in Syracuse will smile broadly. There's Michael Owens, the talented running back for Coach Dick McPherson. Those of us who were there in that Penn State explosion will never forget this run. What a talented tailback the young man is. Then he's got a brother, Billy Owens, Watch him in action out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania High School. Best news Syracuse has ever received. He's eligible academically, and he'll be playing for Coach Beheim next year. You know, Brent, I, I saw an interview with him, and he said, when, this was before he passed that test, and the fellow asked him, what is he going to do if he doesn't pass the test? He said, I will play next year. You know, that Prop 48 is getting a lot of kids really interested in the academic side of their life as well as sports. A few years ago, I think he wasn't worried about it. I think it's probably a very good move by the NCAA. Well, that's a big plus for thinking more about academics. Thompson across now to Duncan, who takes the three. Pass. Three points. Duncan, a man who had to sit out his own last year, and Jim Beheim feels that the Prop 48 kids that have to sit are certainly restricted to the point where it really sets back their careers for a full season when they do come back because they're really not ready to go. Manuel moving it over to Jenkins, who is back in there. Locke has returned. Ellis out with the three fouls, and Locke on the turnaround at six points for the Kentucky Center. Deadlocked at 22 now at the seven-minute mark here in the first half. Wow, off the draws of three eight. But no oh, back oh, foul is called. Now, Brower not that quick on his feet, but I thought he drew a foul there. So here at the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, I'm Brian Musburger along with Billy Packer. We are tied at 22, seven-minute mark. A lot's been in double figures five of his last seven games. He's really starting to get active inside for Kentucky. To be a big boost for them on their run, not only for the SEC, but for the NCAA championship. Here's Bennett. Quickly draws the double team and sends it back to Davender. Now he takes it back. Notice he's got Stevie Thompson down where he'd like to have him in that low post. Trying to overpower him in there. Here he goes again. Kentucky patient this trip. Good. And on the pass in, the foul is called on Thompson. His second. A pass from one uh, graduate student to another. Both Jenkins and uh, Winston Bennett getting their MBAs here at the University of Kentucky. Jenkins actually graduated in three and a half years. Of course, Winston in his fifth year. This is a summation of what we have seen here so far. Cycli starting red hot, hit his first five field goals, and he has not scored since then. Good time now. Bennett hits these free throws to press with Douglas sitting down. 
Duncan will have to be the main ball handler along with Coleman. We will not find out. Go back into Cycli. Muscling his way in for the field goal. Now what Locke has got to see, now that he's played against Cycli for 10, 12 minutes, he's got to understand what Cycli wants to do and try to draw the charge instead of trying to block the shot. Clear out. Davender pulls it up at the baseline. Cycli rebounding. Nice job by Duncan to come back and get the ball when he realized no fast break was there. Cycli wanted it again. This time it was not a very good pass, and Locke was able to get a hand on it. Jimmy Beheim probably wondering what Brower thinks about. He is not the man that's supposed to be feeding the post. Goes over to Syracuse. Timeout is being called here by Eddie Sutton and the Kentucky staff. Jim Beheim will bring the Orange over to 519 left in the first half. In short, the new Cutlass Supreme is not your father's Oldsmobile. What's he doing now? He's staring at a cigar with a funny look on his face. But it's a Dutch Masters or El Producto. How come? Most of theirs don't use natural leaf wrappers anymore. But Garcia Vega still does. Garcia Vega gives you the rich tobacco taste of natural leaf wrappers. Hey, maybe the dog would like to fetch this guy in on a cigar. <laughs> and now, there's Garcia Vega Whips, another honest cigar. He's doing it again. Hey, First name and taste. How do you know when you're ready for another round? Because everything else is just the light. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have J.B. join us, Billy. James Brown, what's coming up at halftime? All right, Brent, thank you very much. Coming up on the college basketball report at halftime, we'll bring you up to date on basketball action from around the country. We'll also check in with Pat Summerall, who will have a report on the final round of the L.A. Open. Billy Packer will have a report of profile on Temple University coach John Chaney. And we'll also introduce you to what has to be a very unique college basketball family. That and more coming up on the College Basketball Report. Brent? All right, James. Billy, uh, Coach Chaney does a marvelous job with the Temple Owls. You know what's neat, Brent, and I know you've talked to a lot of people. It's nice to talk to some guys in sports that have such deep meaning with what they have to say. And I find John Chaney a man that you really want to listen to. He has a lot of quality things to say about life. And I'm really happy about the performance of his team. They appear headed for a top seed in the East. Turnover by Syracuse now. Here at Syracuse 24, Kentucky 22. We're inside of five minutes in the first half. Cycli that time was looking to make a play before he caught the ball. You see that in so many sports. Jenkins out there with Bennett. Davender now with the ball. Manuel and Locke on the floor for Eddie Suckins, Kentucky Wildcats. Syracuse doing a pretty good job in a man-to-man. Brennan cuts through. Coleman's not there, but they don't get him the ball. Coach criticized the Wildcats' lack of patience earlier this week. Against LSU, they played a flawless game, and here today they're trying to do their best as Cycli draws his first foul of the game. Locke is keeping Cycli occupied, which is a great thing when you've got a big man that's scoring well on one end of the court. Make him work on defense. 
throw him off track. No rest in there at all for Ron Cycle. That last series of plays, Kentucky was trying to rub Winston Bennett off lock inside, and they had it a couple of times. They just didn't deliver the ball in time. The leader, Douglas, is back for Coach Bayhan. Rowe and Cycle will sit down as Thompson checks in, too. Billy improved through the years and uh, Rob Locke here at the free throw line and the senior from Reedley California he is certainly a much better basketball player than he was a couple years ago He's improved his foul shooting percentage almost 30 percentage points in one year a lot of concentration and hard work there he always had the technique Duncan and Douglas Thompson Brower is on the floor with Coleman. As Locke reaches over, he fouls Brower. Now that's, and that's his third, and that was a foolish yes, foul. Yes, it was. Locke. He's got Cycli out of the ball game. He knows Brower is far, so far away from the basket that he's not going to be effective from out there. He had no business reaching over on that foul. Madison in for Kentucky, and Locke will sit. That's two players with three personal fouls here in the first half now for Coach Sutton. Ellis and Locke. When Eddie reviews this tape, you'll say, why did I have him out there in the first place? You figure he was worn down a little bit. He had two fouls. Syracuse is playing with their small team with Cycli out of there right now so he can match up very well with a guy like Jenkins on Brower. And, and, and Madison playing Brower, maybe moving Jenkins on over to play Coleman. So one of those substitution moves that just didn't make in time. There's history. Well, hit two. <laughs> that makes up for the pass he threw away. Syracuse leading Kentucky by a three. A big overplay. And Thompson jumped back into that passing lane. And Manuel touched it. So it'll go over to Syracuse. Now that's why you need three referees to handle a basketball game. Two referees never would have been in a position to call that play. Excellent call. Nice piece of work. Davender is a fine defender. He's given Douglas as much trouble as anybody I've seen this year. Foul on Bennett. He jumped in front of Thompson. Winston doesn't agree with that call, but he picks up his second. There was a little rain delay out there at the Riviera in Los Angeles. That's certainly unusual. But they're back playing, and we'll have an update at halftime on that. Chip Beck in the lead after three rounds at 14 under par. Old Wake Forest comes through again. Jay Haas on a tear so far. He and Lanny have both had a couple. What, three wins? Win. I didn't mean to interrupt your... Uh, well, I'm just trying to give a plug to your alumni. That's right. Uh, That's right. <laughs> now, you know, last year, Wake Forest alumnus won 25% of the purse on the, on the PGA Tour. How's that? Is that true? Right? Yeah. Uh, if it's not right, I'm going to say that anyway, but I, I believe that's true. Didn't include well, much of Arnold Palmer, either. Well, yeah, he did all right on the seniors. Oh, of course. Well, I'll tell you, Brower and Stevie Thompson hitting from the foul line is something Jim Bayon hasn't seen all year. Syracuse starting to get on that five-point lead, making them natives a little restless here. Syracuse is overplaying every pass, so Kentucky can get some backdoor movement. Cavender. New York City moves there. Now Douglas tries to give it back to him. Oh, what a screen. Great screen. <laughs> Couldn't hit it. And a foul inside. Madison. Now, what's really nice, we'll see the screen coming right up here on Eddie Down. Man, he takes the lick. And as this foul was called, Coleman went over to see if he was okay. Nice piece of sportsmanship. Thompson at the line for a one 
Derek Coleman says, in the Big East, everybody has good sports until they go up against the Hoyas. That, that's coming out of his mouth. Bauer runs it down. Syracuse, even without cycling, getting a lot of opportunities. Coleman. He's a big-time player, isn't he? Oh, yep. And he's left-handed. You'd think Jenkins would be over on that side. There are three left-handers on the floor for Syracuse right now. Thompson, Brower, and Coleman, the entire front line. Syracuse just overplaying every pass. Holding a five-point lead right now, and Gavagher cuts it to three. That's nine points for the Wildcats point guard. Off his foot out of bounds. Sherman Douglas can really see the floor. He had Stevie Thompson cutting a good 40 feet away and was going to fire that bounce pass through. Cycli replacing Brower for the last two minutes of the first half. Now it is Jenkins going to be on Cycli. He's going to have his hands full down low. Duncan wanted Cycli, but he traveled before he passed the ball. Matt Rowe in. And Hanson, for the first time, will play for the Wildcats. You notice Rowe has not scored today with this tight man-to-man -man defense. He's only been able to get off one shot. Syracuse goes back to the 2-3 zone. So Reggie Hansen is still another freshman out of Somerset, Kentucky. Number 35 handling the ball right now and sees his first action. Better early in the year, you'd have thought that Derek Miller would be the guy to come into these situations, but he just hadn't been able to hit from the outside. Gavender running down the missed three, and Beheim lecturing Rowe that he should have picked up that long rebound. A very low scoring game considering how frantic the pace has been. Really fits into Kentucky's way of thinking a little better than Syracuse's game in the 60s or 70s. Bennett. The three. Winston Bennett. Syracuse ought to go for one. They're going to spread it out. A little four-corner type action. Now it's Sightly in low, and Jenkins staying with him, but he fouled him. Ronnie Sightly was kind of caught not realizing what to do. He had the position he wanted, but he realized that Jim Beheim wanted to hold it for the last shot. He had no passing lane, so he just got frustrated. You can see him just turn and roll inside. Good pump fake. Jenkins gets just a little piece of the arm. Half minute left in the first half, and Cycli can break the tie. Brent, this club shoots 60% on the year. Now, you know, we've seen enough major tournament games to know that that eventually will cost them. And they go 0 for 2 that trip, but Coleman with another rebound gets it inside to Thompson. Get it out to Derrick. Rebound Kentucky. They can take a halftime lead. It's last shot time, and Davender now will bring the time down. There was a case where Derek Coleman should have got that ball back out in the hands of Sherman Douglas with Syracuse having a last shot at the two points. Bennett couldn't get the handle. Douglas races the clock. He beat it. Sherman Douglas racing the clock with three and a half seconds to go. Drives in for the layup that puts Syracuse into the lead, 32 to 30. Just bad ball handling there. The ball gets down in the corner. Douglas does a great thing when he looked up at the clock, Brent. You saw him as I did. He is a smart player. So they miss Rex Chapman, certainly, on that last trip as Winston Bennett has to go out on top, and he's unsuccessful. We come to the end of the first half. Syracuse, 32. 
Kentucky 30. James Brown returns with a college basketball report after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Volkswagen. Experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. The new Volkswagen Fox is a lot of car for the money. For instance, a powerful 1.8-liter fuel-injected engine is standard. So are power front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and four-wheel independent suspension. Now, we could have done what some did, cut the standard features and offered less car for less money. But we'd never pull a stunt like that. That isn't the Volkswagen way. 1988 Fox, only $62.90. Once every four years, something happens in this country. Once every four years, the Olympics come to America. And once every four years... Words of wisdom, and of course, I saw Rick Roby walk by here a few minutes ago, was one of the uh, outstanding players in that club. Hey, Billy, talking about the statistics of the first half, what stands out, how about the number of turnovers for these two teams? Really surprises me, and the fact that I think it's been more defense than anything else, but some fellas trying to make plays that aren't there. Derek Brower, for instance, and you very seldom see Sherman Douglas in a half with more turnovers than assists. Ronnie Cycli enjoyed a big half, especially in the early moments, Billy. Well, Kentucky started out straight man-to-man. -man. Cycli loved to see it. Locke was playing down behind him. He was caught in the low post position. And Cycli was really able to take advantage of it early on. You know, we talk about Syracuse's problems at the free throw line. Well, here today, Kentucky didn't shoot so well. Yeah, they haven't been going to the line with their normal fellows. And you got to remember, with Chapman out of the ball game, their offensive structure has changed a great deal. And the two point guards. You can see the matchup between Douglas out of Washington and Davender from Brooklyn, New York. Davender has outscored him. Douglas with one more assist. And, of course, that big steal and field goal that puts Syracuse ahead as we prepare to start in the second half. Those of you in Syracuse who've just joined us, don't adjust the color. The orange men are wearing blue here this afternoon. Leading it by two. The Big East against the Southeastern Conference. You know, a club who ought to really be enjoying this ball game is Seton Hall, but they're starting to come on strong. And you talk about a Big East Conference that if Syracuse were to win this game, maybe I'll go six feet. And well, a lot of rides. Eddie Sutton, Billy, elects to come back with his starting lineup. The freshman Ellis playing with three fouls. Locke back at center. He also has three. A very patient attack. They bring the shot clock down inside of 10 seconds now. And Bennett coming through a screen. Misses. Locke goes after the offensive rebound. And it is hit by Syracuse, Kentucky's ball. There is a case where Syracuse, when they play this 2-3 zone, Stevie Thompson is awful small on that back line. Lock able to take advantage of it. Manuel has not contributed much offensively. Well, he's been playing the wing. Today he's been forced to go to the backcourt, so maybe he just hasn't made that adjustment yet. He moves the ball to Bennett. Quick pass to Ellis off the fake. Ellis drives for the layup. He was only one of five in the first half, but he had good scoring opportunities, and here he comes back in the early moments. In the second half to tie the score. That's our fifth tie of this game. Well, Ellis is comfortable playing out there 15 feet in the basket. He probably is going to be a wing player. Now Douglas goes to his act. Davender sticks with him and he has to ship it back to Coleman. He draws the foul. Ellis on the inside was the defensive player. And that is the fourth personal on the freshman a big moment here in the early seconds of the second half. You know, what set that up was just an incredible pass by Douglas. How he ever found the opening between the Kentucky players to get that ball to uh, Coleman, I'll never know. Ellis leaves, and Richard Madison, 42, checks in for Sutton. points for Coleman along with his seven rebounds. Syracuse now up to 60% in that free throw line. Derek Coleman could be a very good free throw shooter. He's got great rotation on the shot. Just has to learn to stay with it. Cycle 
is switching off on Bennett, had him well covered by Bennett. Fred, you pointed out Manuel hasn't really gotten involved with the offense. You notice how often he catches the ball and doesn't look at the basket. He merely looks for the offensive flow. And to be a threat, you've got to take that look up at the basket. Regained it. Easy. Oh, and oh, Anderson oh. lost the handle. Cycling comes back. And Eddie Scott is livid, and he's going to yank him out right now. An easy scoring opportunity for Madison, and he simply lost the handle on the gimmick. What made Eddie Sutton so mad is all he had to do is lay that up on the board. Cycle rams into, it's a four-point swing off that miss by Madison. The case there was locked side to front cycle. First time today Syracuse has been able to go ahead and throw that lob over their head. With no help on the weak side behind them. Lock steps way out high. Row taking manual. Missing someone like Lex Chapman here at Madeley in the early minutes. Navender against the double team and Cycle off with the miss. You know, you felt that mentally Eddie Davender missed him there because he just felt that nobody else wanted to put the shot up. Cycle wants it. Bangs off of him and lost the ball. Truman Douglas. Quick hands. Eddie Sutton may have to go time out here. It's a pretty good run by Syracuse. And you felt the last time down the floor, Kentucky was unsure of themselves offensively. Let's see what if Sutton's going to call one. He's going to call official. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> first things first. Yeah, I think they're a little confused offensively right now. Davender can take Rowe. Oh, ships it. To Manuel and a three-point opportunity for the freshman. Brent, you, on that particular play, Sherman Douglas realized Rowe was matched up on Davener. He wanted to go back and pick up Davener. When he did, he, now watch what happened. Davener is caught right here with Rowe. Douglas realized that he's ready to make the switch. You can see he's ready to make the switch. He had no business leaving his man, who happened to be Manuel, wide open under the basket. Really, Sherman Douglas' fault. Duncan and Jenkins checked in here. Short on the free throw, Coleman, eighth rebound. Kentucky continues to suffer from that free throw line, which has been one of the real assets they've had this year. Cycle goes in deep to Coleman. Good. Coleman great keeps hands. it alive. That great reach of his. And the injured guard, Rex Chapman, watching, and don't be surprised if he doesn't play Wednesday night. Non-conference game, Sutton electing to keep him out. Off Locke's hand, Manuel ships it back to Locke. Nice teamwork. Wasn't pretty, but everybody had the right thing in mind. off the fake, throws it up high, and the foul is called. Winston Bennett didn't get there in time. Douglas loves to throw up that kind of running one-hander when he goes the baseline. Three on Bennett. Timeout. Here at the 15-24 mark, Syracuse leading by four, and the natives are a little restless about the officiating. Doing? Hi, garage sale. Garage sale? Uh, my lucky hat. Moving means making lots of decisions. That's why Ryder helps you with our free move it yourself guide. This came all the way from Hawaii. Yeah, well, maybe a Hawaii will buy it. It helps you handle everything from picking the best truck to packing your china to planning your expenses. This would be worth a lot of money, Steve. What do you think? Honey, can we talk about this? Ryder. We're there at every turn. How to shave a giant. Avoid big trouble. Use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Luba Smooth Strip. So the comfortable shave for a giant is... This little guy. 
Good News Plus from Gillette. Now, everywhere in the world you can dial direct. You can dial direct with MCI. Everywhere. Waka. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. Great rewards always come from giving it your best. And that's understood around the world. And at your local True Value hardware store. Where you'll find their exclusive lineup of rugged Master Mechanic power tools. Rely on Master Mechanic power tools to help you tackle the toughest do-it-yourself projects. And come back for more. And make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. While you were away, referee Jody Sylvester and coach Eddie Sutton went nose to nose on the sideline. Billy, what was Jody upset about? Well, a referee doesn't mind hearing from a head coach. Now, he's not supposed to be talking to him this year. But what happened is some of the assistant coaches at Kentucky started to get their opinion in, and Jody just wasn't going to put up with that at all. And I don't blame him. So he went over and uh, made that uh, opinion well known on that Kentucky bench. He's working in this game with Mickey Crowley, Gene Manji. I think they've worked an excellent basketball game. I don't know why the fans are on their case. And what Beheim was concerned about, he thought they weren't giving Douglas two shots. Now the second one for the Syracuse coach made it as a walk-on and became a teammate of the great Dave Main and was a co-captain of Syracuse as a player his senior year. He's been involved with that program now for 25 years as a player, assistant coach, and head coach. Carolina not turning the ball over the way they did against the Temple Owls today, huh? Not playing the same kind of opponent. And it gets it into Jenkins' hands. The Wildcats find themselves down by six here in the early going. Syracuse using that zone to change things around. Put, put Coleman over on the other side of the court. Gives him a little bit of rebounding over there. You can see how Kentucky really misses Chapman offensively. They're not sure who's going to put up the shot. It is locked this time from the baseline. Coleman off with the rebound into the hands of the team leader. Sherman Douglas on the pull-up. One of the most underrated basketball players in America. Sherman Douglas. Now, we're not going to see that Chapman today, I don't think. But Eddie Sutton, in the next uh, minute or so, has got to figure out a way to attack this zone with somebody that will take a shot. Nobody was even looking. Right, they're not, they're not looking at the hoop. Against the zone, you've got to look at that basket to keep the defense honest and then also to put your shot up. Down to 14 seconds. Jenkins off the fake. And that 2-3 zone really vulnerable in the center as far as getting the ball down there. Comes across the timeline. Didn't deep to Cycle off the lob. They burn him for the first time today. Brent, I don't think that that should be, a, that is a legal play. I think that ball was in the cylinder when he caught it. It's never called. And, of course, nobody does it better than Douglas, but I think that Cycli was touching that ball in the cylinder. Davinder. Foul called underneath against Cycli. His second. Now, watch this alley-oop pass. We might not have the perfect angle for it. Here goes the ball up. There's no doubt in my mind. See, that ball would have gone right into the basket, and he's in contact with the ball when the ball is in the cylinder. No back. Bennett, cycling rebounding. You've got to like this Syracuse team as we approach the NCAA tournament. Short. Now it's Davender in the foot race. Two on two, and Douglas quickly comes back on. We're seeing a great matchup between these two outstanding guards. Matter of fact, Davender, probably underrated as a defender. He sits right in there with Jerry Grant, in my mind, and Billy to go out and really play somebody in the backcourt. There's the opening. Jenkins sends it back, and Manuel misses and Locke with an offensive putback. It's 11 points for Rob Locke.
Duncan, 14. A spinner. And Sykley had it knocked away and out of bounds. Syracuse ball. And of course, at the end of today's game, Billy and I will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. There is Jimmy Beheim had to take Stevie Thompson out. He cannot play that 2-3 zone against a big team with Thompson on that back line. So Brower comes in, give him a little bit more power inside. Spikely powers in, short, offensive putback. It's good. Boy, he and Coleman have great two-handed rebounding strength. It's an eight-point Syracuse lead with Cycling moving up to the free-throw line. Mike Scott, the transfer from Wake Forest, coming into the ballgame. He's trying to get a body in there big enough to stop these two fellows inside. Mike Scott's first action today. Now it's a nine-point Syracuse lead. Rex Chapman standing up on that bench. He's looking around obviously if this was a major conference game, he'd be playing, but probably a smart move to hold him out of there. Good help by Duncan. Red zone's a lot bigger now. You see with Brower in that back line. might not be stretching it too far to say that as many as six Big East teams can wind up in the field of 64 this year. Seton Hall playing very impressively. Bennett left alone. That, that was Ronnie Sykley left home on that one, Brent. They had the double team in the corner. He went over to create a triple team against a man that doesn't play. Defender, but the pass too high by Coleman and Davender. Fouled by Duncan. You get the feeling sometimes that Davender would like to get into an up-tempo game against Douglas. I think he's certainly capable of doing that, and, and I think both of these guys taking it as an individual challenge today against each other. Now we've got a TV timeout, Billy. We've got a 49-42 score, a lot of time. 11-16, we'll be right back. Ever since your post office invented express mail overnight delivery, others have tried to copy our eagle, but it's not so easy. You see, express mail overnight reliability is close to perfect with the most convenient locations and prices as low as 10 dollars He's got to stay at home. When he doesn't stay at home, everybody rotate and watch how Manuel gets wide open under the basket. Ball goes to the corner. Double team takes place. Sightly, for some reason, goes over to help out. Nobody back at home. Derek Coleman not there either. Kentucky gets an easy layup. So from the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, the Wildcats inbound the ball wearing their home white against the traveling new blue uniforms of the Syracuse Orangemen. Syracuse, the Big East, leading the Wildcats 49-42. Manuel with a shot blocked by Coleman. Jenkins gets it back, running hook, misses. Lock battles back into Jenkins' hands, oh, and it's stolen man. by Douglas. Douglas comes out for the Orange men, and here's Sykley's pass to Coleman, but he traveled. Well, there's a case, a fast break that doesn't get well organized. Douglas, instead of taking the ball to the middle and allowing Sykley to come behind him, gets Sykley in the middle. Look at this deal. Sherman Douglas just pulls it right away and takes it on down. 10.45, Billy, a seven-point lead. What do you think Sutton might do here to find a score? Well, what I think he's got to do is really start punching his ball down in the center of that 3-2 zone and then start working baseline a little bit. Well, there's the center, and they went to Jenkins, but he traveled. He really has got some problems because there's not a creative scorer other than Davender out there on the floor. So they really miss Rex Chapman. Row return for the Orange men. And he's, there comes a guy that was the designated shooter, shooter earlier in the year, Derek Miller. Now, this kid is under a lot of pressure to hit some of these shots, but he's certainly capable. He has a great outside jump shot. This may be the day that he breaks out of it. This may be the day that he'll have to break out of it. Eddie's tried everyone except his son. Thank you, 
Cyclists going back in their own zone. Trying to help out inside for Cyclists. Matt Rowe happy to finally see a zone where he can get a shot off. Thompson, there he is. Let's say Rowe gets a jump shot off here. There it is. Missing the home run, Bennett rebounding. Let's see if Miller elects to try and break into that scoring column right away. Well, I think he should try to get into the game a little bit. That's what he's done so much, is come right out and try to put up the jump. See, the fans are cheering every time he touches. He's got to get in the flow of the game a little bit. Gavender keeps giving it to him, and Coleman jumping out defensively on that wing. Lock was open briefly underneath. Davender's three, not there, and Coleman goes after it. Quickly to Douglas. Here's Rose three. Underneath, there was a foul on Cycli, his third. You know, Rowe, away from home, has not hit that three with the exception of Pittsburgh game. He's just much more comfortable playing up there in the dome. And Beheim will return Duncan to the Syracuse lineup with Rowe coming back out. And what Miller ought to realize is that the side of the floor he should try to go on is the side where, where Stevie Douglas is, not over there with Coleman, because Coleman could come out and put his hand up against his jump shot. So he should come over here to the left-hand side of the court. Yeah, Thompson down yeah. the 32 over here on right. the left. Be, here he comes there up he now. Right. The three missing, and Coleman was still another rebound. 12 for the game. Douglas's pull up. Into the hands of Jenkins, off the fake. Here's Davender Duncan back alertly on defense. The drive is not there. Miller tried to tap it in, and Coleman off with still another rebound. Puts it down on the floor. Crowd wanted a foul call on Derrick because he dribbled out. Thompson, and he's fouled by Jenkins. He'll shoot a pair of free throws on that one. That's four on Jenkins. Give Derek Coleman a great deal of credit, not only in the physical play that he made, but when he realized by looking down court that Locke was still down there, he realized that, that Kentucky was short underneath and really got that bounce pass in there nicely. Smart play. Derek Coleman's a lot different person than you'd think he is, but you know, he looks like he'd be a rough, tough kid, and he, he plays hard nose, but he's got a lot of smarts to him. A very interesting kid. So he's very pleasant, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, he is. Off the court, he's a very, very pleasant guy. On the court, he's tough. Cycli, reaching in, commits foul number four. A lot of time left in this one. Mayheim sends Brower in to replace him at the 8.30 mark. may see what Derek Coleman can do offensively because with Cycli out of there some of those inside points are going to have to come from Coleman and Ellis returned with those four fouls so Locke with three he's out there with Ellis right now Winston Bennett with the three Davender and Manuel bring it to the attack Brower in the middle of his own for Syracuse I think Kentucky can really get some offensive rebounds against the team Syracuse has out there now. Bennett missing the jumper. Knocked away from Douglas. Coleman comes up with it. Thompson's on his right. And a great steal by Manuel. But Coleman gets it back. And handed it off to no one. <laughs> he was going through. You know what he was embarrassed? He loves to dribble in practice. And he put that one between his legs and got it stolen. So he was taking up for a little something there. Nine point lead now. No daylight for the Orange Man. Bennett's jump shot. And Jimmy Beheim wanting him to go to the high post half court offense, not throw the ball the length of the floor. And we'll continue after this word for your local station. 
This is CBS. Lafitte, Louisiana, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat races. Forget Villanova and Georgetown playing for the championship. The underdogs, lights, cameras, Georgetown, Villanova. Perfect shooting, Villanova championship. It comes inbound, and that's it. It's 66, 64. Villanova upsets the Hoyas of Georgetown, and Villanova wins the NCAA championship. All they shot that night here in Rupp Arena was 78%. Errol Jensen was perfect, five for five from the floor. One of the greatest upsets in the history of any sport. Davinder's three, Brower rebounding, it's 51-44. Douglas running the floor for Jim Beheim, and he is fouled. One of the things that helps anybody that really can run the fast break well, the David Rivers type, the Sherman Douglas, is when they come down the floor with the dribble, they never have to worry about where the ball is. It merely is an extension of their hands, and they see the full court. They know what, what's behind them, what's on the wings, and that time Sherman Douglas was able to take it all the way on in there. Shoots kind of a flat shot off the palm of his hand. Just a lot of palm on his shot. Bennett's hands. Syracuse missed its last four free throws. Still leading by seven at the seven-minute mark. Kentucky searching for a score, if you will. Someone to create some offense here. Without Rex Chapman, unable to play because of that injured lower back. May return as early as Wednesday night. Bennett will try to pick up the slack. That's two jumpers from that spot that he's buried. Pulling the Wildcats back to within five. Crowd trying to help out here in the Rupp Arena. Duncan dribbling off the screen, and it's an offensive foul call against Duncan. Now giving Syracuse coach Jim Beheim the opportunity to reinsert Ronnie Cycli, even though he's playing with four personal fouls. Beheim will come back with Cycli right now at the 6.30 mark. Ben, what I think happened to Syracuse there is with Cycli out, they didn't stay in their offense. Everybody started to go on a one and one tear. Cycli back in the low post would give them a place to throw that ball. So it's been Bennett from inside that spot who has provided a couple of field goals. Now he's deep in the corner. Davender off the penetration comes up and he's fouled and he gets the bounce. A three-point opportunity. Kentucky's back in it. Well, even when you're playing a zone, you've got to guard a man in your area as if it's man to man. And that time that row didn't do it. Davender just ate him up. Beheim calls timeout. of all things who's going to win the Kentucky Derby he makes his acting debut he also folks is one of the most eligible bachelors in all of college basketball I told Jimmy I would throw that in so. you, you know what he almost was discussing at that table night the technical foul he got in the first <laughs> <laughs> which he wouldn't be too happy with 6.15 to go here with Syracuse leading Kentucky 51-48 Brent would they have had an ex-assistant coach in that bluegrass I mean, Eddie Sutton loses his close game on an assistant coach with a technical. Davender uh, apparently has the strap broken on his goggles. He had an eye scratched earlier this year. He's moving up to the free throw line without the goggles on right now. The trainer trying to adjust them over at the side, and the official said, you want to call another timeout, and he'll come out and shoot without him. They leave him up. 15 and the fans alive in the Rupp Arena. Without Rex Chapman, the Wildcats have closed back in. They stay in their 2-3 zone, even though they showed a little upcourt pressure. The half-court game is not the Syracuse strength. 
but it was that time as Rowe buries the home run, his first of the afternoon. And Syracuse, two of three shooting for three. Good confidence by Jimmy Beheim in Rowe, even though Rowe had missed uh, three in a row. Put him right back in the ballgame. Cavender penetrates. Oh, the goggles are destined to stay over there in the hands of the trainer. You see what Davender has done. He feel, feels he can take Rowe, so he set himself up right in his area. Cycling deep. His spot. That's it. All called on Kentucky. That's four on lock. You notice how much, how well Syracuse adjusts in their half-court offense with Cycling in the game. When he went out for those couple of minutes, they just didn't ever look inside at all. Now, a freshman like Ellis has got to learn how hard you must come from the weak side when they get the ball into the big man's hands and give Locke some assistance there underneath. That'll come with some time. But you can see Ellis kind of hesitate on that weak side and watch the play develop. And here again is that free throw shooting of Syracuse that must drive Jimmy Beheim crazy. They've missed their last five. They'd be national champions if they'd hit a couple of important free throws against Indiana down in New Orleans. Now they miss six. Ellis off with the rebound. And they go to the line so much, Grant. I mean, this is a club that has a lot of opportunities in the front end of one and one, which they never convert on. And it here on the other side with Ellis. Manuel's on the right. Jenkins coming through the lane with lockout. Davender off the penetration again. Misfiring, but into the hands of Bennett. Bennett will crash for the three. Wouldn't get the roll, but he'll come to the line, and that's what he wanted was a three-point scoring opportunity off that drive. That's two on Coleman, and after our NCAA basketball, we'll send you out to the Riviera. Final round of the Los Angeles Open. Delayed by rain, but they are certainly expecting resumption of play there. Then one of the things that Kentucky is starting to do now, particularly with Davender's penetration, Eddie's getting his glasses back on, and that is they're sending four men to the offensive boards, which means that Syracuse ought to be able to get a fast break opportunity here the next time Davender drives and misses a shot. Free throw shooting is starting to pile up now. Kentucky, an excellent free throw shooting club, although they weren't in the first half. Still having some adjustment problems. Now he seems satisfied. Bennett can make it a two-point game. 4.52 remaining. Missing, and Manuel gets in behind Cycli and pulls it down. They're just killing Syracuse off the board. Syracuse, even with Cycli having five, may have to go man-to-man. -man. Kentucky will use a timeout. trouble shows four players with four and Billy Packer what do you think Jim Beheim might have done here with well this I, I think it's a good move he's gone into a box in one and I expected him to change defense because Eddie Sutton obviously called that time out to set up a special play but here you can see a jump defense by Syracuse little box in one Stevie Thompson on Davis so a nice counter move by Jimmy Beheim There's Thompson chasing Davender Sutton realizing that he's been changed up, so what he's set to do will not work right now. Manuel gets it back and cross quickly to Bennett. Here's his spot on the left side. Practice paying off for the senior from Louisville, Winston Bennett, who has tied it at the 4-11 mark. When they go back to man to man, it's time to get Ronnie Sykley the ball in low. Or Coleman, who ships it back out and then takes the return pass on the inside. Short gets his own rebound. Oh, and Ellis wow. falls out and it looked like a clean block. Good block. Boy, he was right on top of the ball. Now, Coleman's doing a great job down and low. Ellis right behind him. But I think he got all ball on this one. 
This is the first shot. Coleman gets it back with those great hands. Boy, that's all ball, Brent. So freshman Leron Ellis fouls out. Well, Eddie's putting him back. Do we? Yeah, Eddie doesn't realize he has five. Maybe he doesn't. I think Ellis knew it, and that's yeah. why he went over to the side. Yeah, he's out of there. Eddie didn't realize it. So what Eddie's trying to say right now is that the foul was called on 23 and not 24, but it, without any question, Eddie's just trying to pull one there. Now here we see Coleman grabs the great offensive rebound, pulls it back down. He's going to go up for the shot again. Now here is the block. Boy, that's a great block. But not wearing a strike shirt or having a whistle, it wasn't such a good block because it's a foul. Block returns. And Coleman with 11 points and 15 rebounds at the line. Zip both of those. That's four in a row for Derek. Now remember both lock and cycle playing with four fouls. And Sergio stays in the box in one. Stevie Thompson on Davenport. Bennett on the baseline missing. Rebound Syracuse, but he stepped out of bounds. Thompson came down before he released the ball. Kentucky with a second chance to retie it or even go ahead on a three-point field goal. Now, Stevie Thompson playing the two-free zone here on the out-of-bounds situation, which means that, see if he can drop back and get into his box one. Are they going to stay in the two-free zone? Syracuse confused right now. Rowe wanting them to play the box in one. Davender out on top. Cycling rebounded at the three minute mark. That just takes some seconds off the clock before sending it to Thompson. You know where they're going with this ball. Lock goes down, tries to draw the offensive foul, does not. They want Cycli to touch that ball at least one time here. Douglas off a spin move, sends it, and it's intercepted by Locke, who gives it up into the hands of Manuel. Rowe and Thompson back defensively. Another opportunity to tie. Then sometimes you try so hard for one thing in the game that the defense can adjust, and that's what happens. Bennett has it deflected by Coleman, and Emanuel's hands score it and put him on the free throw line. concentration here by Manuel. Excellent block by Coleman coming across. Manuel stays right with it even though they come down in his face after the shot. Best cheerleader on that Kentucky bench is none other than Rex Chapman. He's really into the game. There's the star. Warm-up jacket still on. Let's see how intense he is. Manuel attempting to put the Wildcats ahead. Syracuse <laughs> so intent in getting that ball to Ronnie Cycli. Let's see if they go back to him again. They set up in their one four offense. Douglas came up with a shot. He wanted to pass the ball, got up in the air, and there was some cutting motion on his left, and so he shot it. Stevie Thompson messed him up, got all the way under the basket, there was no passing lane. And he suddenly wanted to use some time. With a one 
point lead. He brings it down toward that 140 mark. Free throws will certainly be vital here the rest of the way, too. They're inside of 10, Davender off the fake, Douglas with him. And so Bennett is short, but there was a foul. Over the back, Zeichley will be on the line, and he's certainly had his problems there, Brent. Shooting on the year, only 55%. He is one of five yep. here this afternoon shooting free throws. Syracuse is 13 of 24 from the line. They have shot 11 more free throws than Kentucky. The Wildcats are 6 of 13. The Orange men lead. Beheim directing the defense. And they're going to go back to their box in one. Yeah, They'll the chase Davender. Davender coming underneath. Thompson watching him. This seems almost like that Georgetown for the moment game that we're right, you know, I'm right next to you here. This game's getting tense. We're gonna lift Jenkins have that shot. Manuel will take it. The freshman puts Kentucky up by a point. Inside of a minute, Beheim will bring him across the line and call the timeout. Senior VP MIS, big R, no imaging. So, I'm showing him four windows in the Wang workstation. IBM, VS, he says, I know you can do that. I saw your commercials. Fifth window is a whiz file. He says, what's that? I said, that's an image. Team in trouble as far as timeouts are concerned. In case of a jump ball, Syracuse will have possession. Both teams were in the penalty some time ago. So, it's 59-58 Kentucky. And uh, what do you think Beheim might come up with here offensively? Without though? question, he's going to try to pump that ball. He's got plenty of time to pump that ball down to Ronnie Stikely. Tell Coleman to get up on the board. On the weak side, Kentucky goes in there man to man. I thought they might throw a little zone at him. Let's see what they're playing. Without a cutter, I can't tell what defense they're in. Douglas and getting a hand on the ball was Jenkins as he came down the baseline and tossed up one of those lobs. Now, now a new 45, this is the rule I don't agree with. If a good defensive play is made, the pressure should be on Syracuse there, but it penalized Kentucky for having a good defensive play. So in other words, they can bring it down for the last shot right. and win it at the buzzer. The Wildcats no longer have an automatic opportunity to get the ball back. There's 25 seconds against Eddie Sutton, and Syracuse can end it all on a last shot here if that's the opportunity they want to go for. Exactly, Brent. They had a seven-second differential, which meant Kentucky, no matter what Syracuse did, would have one last chance. They'll not get that now. And like you say, it was Jenkins. He should be credited with a good defensive move. Sure. We'll be right back for the last 25 of regulation. seconds Derek Coleman will take the ball out of bounds under the Syracuse goal Douglas can always bust away deep he wants it Coleman looks in his direction and then goes cycle two three zone by Kentucky. Douglas on a runner can't get it to fall Manuel yanks it away Manuel out on the dribble Manuel breaks free Quickly to Cycle. Five seconds, but there is a timeout. Still time for Beheim to get it to overtime, Billy. He's down three. That's right, and he's got a good man in row to go ahead and put up that shot. You, really, you can't blame Syracuse for what they eventually got. 
They like to put that ball up on the board and give that great rebounding to some of Coleman and Cycli a chance. That's exactly what they had. But Coleman went up a little early. Manuel gets it, and of course you can see everybody standing and looking. Rowe falls down, and that gave Manuel a clear shot to the hoop. Now, here's Beheim watching as Douglas penetrates, following the ball, saying, get it, Derek. Now on the far side, and then he sees Manuel come out on the dribble, and Rowe is beaten, and he says, uh-oh. Eddie Sutton's reactions are entirely different from Beheim. He said, come on, freshman, get it in there. <laughs> That's it, ride it. Now, come on, let's play some D. Well, Brett, we still have seven seconds to go in this ballgame. Plenty of time, and of course... If you're Syracuse, you have got to go for the three-point play. And, and here's something I believe in. I believe in fouling. Now, you I know exactly what you're going to do. Yes, You've been sir. saying this for two years, Coach Packer. No way you give a team a chance to you make the three. knock him down yes, when he sir. goes in the air and put him on Well, no, I don't ever even get a, in a chance to get the shot off. You go foul, put him on the line, and end up with your own destiny. No way they can beat you three-pointers today in case you're wondering Syracuse is two of five and regardless of what happens today Billy you and I got a big one up in the carrier dome we always look forward to going to Syracuse next week they'll play Pittsburgh and that could decide a regular season race in the Big East great fans up there now it's cycling is out of the game that surprised me a little bit Duncan in the ball game cycling not there to rebound Jimmy Bayhawk figures it's one and done Manuel comes in on Douglas right away. Ball out of bounds, and they knock two seconds off that clock, however. It's down to five. You know who they want to get this shot off is Rowe, and he's being guarded by Jenkins, which would be tough for him to shoot over him. Douglas breaks loose Kentucky ball. Locke fires it up in the crowd with four seconds to go. The Wildcats start the celebration. Douglas is down on that sideline. He ran right into Locke trying to chase the ball down. You know, with seven seconds, I don't know why Syracuse was working so hard. Yeah, there is Douglas getting back up on the Syracuse sideline. He crashed into Locke trying to chase it down on the lead pass. You know, seven seconds is a lifetime, and they had another timeout to go also. <laughs> Little body English. Cycle. You see him hold his head when that ball was coming free, and now Locke stepping up to the free throw line. How many times in basketball have we seen a team lose its star and the rest of the club bands together? That was the case here this afternoon for Eddie Sutton, playing without Rex Chapman. What did they call that? An intentional? Yes. Uh, did they? Yes, they did. It's over. Kentucky beats Syracuse in Lexington. Eddie Sutton and Jim Beheim shake hands. It's a four-point Wildcat win. Southeastern Conference over the Big East here this afternoon. Our Chevrolet players in the game for Syracuse. Ronnie Cycli. He led the way offensively. And the lead man for Kentucky, Eddie Davender. The check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each school's general scholarship fund. Our final score, Kentucky 62, Syracuse 58. For Billy Packer and James Brown, I'm Brent Musburger. NCAA basketball has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA championship. Golf is coming your way next.